I was scrolling through LinkedIn the other day and I realized that I missed a Photoshop update. And it's pretty significant because they introduced a generative AI option. Pretty cool. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikhail Drew Pelham. I talk about digital fashion design software and communication on this channel. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. We tend to focus on Illustrator on this channel, at least when it comes to the Adobe programs, but Photoshop is still helpful for a lot of things. Most notably, designers tend to use it to create mood boards. And some of the updates I'm going to show you today are going to be great for that. I'm certainly excited to incorporate them into my fall semester classes. They've made a few significant updates to the program, but probably the one that's most notable right now is a generative AI feature. To quote Adobe, Generative Fill, which is the name of their new AI tool, is a magical new tool grounded in your innate creativity, enabling you to add, extend, and remove content from your images non-destructively, which is pretty significant, using simple text prompts to achieve realistic results that will surprise, delight, and astound you in seconds. Those are some big claims. Let's see how Adobe does. The first thing you should know about using this particular feature is that you have to download Photoshop beta. It's not just going to show up if you do your regular update of Photoshop with the Creative Cloud. In the directions on the feature page, it says to install Photoshop beta, visit the beta apps tab in your Creative Cloud. But I couldn't find that tab, so I went to a page titled Experience the Future of Photoshop with Generative Fill, and there was a link to try the beta app. It re-downloads Creative Cloud, which probably gave my app a very necessary update. And when the app opened, the beta apps were available. I've since realized I was just overlooking it on the sidebar. Anywho, I first tried to add a runway around a model, but I wasn't really getting the result I wanted. So I reversed it and started with the runway and had AI generate the model. To get this to work, you need to first create a selection and don't worry about it being on the same layer. One of the things I do like about this function is that it automatically creates a separate layer. Once you create a selection, the contextual toolbar appears, another new update, that gives you the option for generative fill. When you click the button, like all of AI, you'll need to describe what you want the AI to create. So I'm going to type the same prompt I typed in my previous video on AI and the future of fashion and using mid journey. So I typed full body fashion editorial photograph of black female model in Valentino inspired dress looking away from the camera, insanely detailed, hyper maximalist, hyper realistic, unreal engine, DOF studio lighting. Uh-huh. I'm going to try this again, removing some of the details. One more time with even more general prompts. Oof, faces are not great. I'm not writing it off because faces aren't great for most AI image generators except Midjourney, which feels like the Zara of all the AI generators. And it is in beta, so they're working on it. My guess is that we'll see this released in time for their Adobe conference in the fall, and it'll work a lot better. Regardless, I can see how this can add some interesting imagery to a mood board. 
You know how you find the perfect image for your board, but there's like this one thing in it that you don't like, or you're taking pictures at a museum and you've got the perfect shot and then somebody walks into it and ruins it. Both those scenarios are perfect for using the remove tool. Open your picture in Photoshop beta and choose the remove tool from the tools panel. Then adjust the size of the cursor and drag it over the area you want removed from the picture. Now I realize this first example is pretty simple. So I tried it on a few different images to see the extent of how this tool will work. This function reminds me a lot of content aware fill. I think it works great to remove objects that have simpler backgrounds to blend to. But as you can see with this picture with the gated window and sheer curtains, when there's too much detail, I think it's a little too much for the AI to understand. This improvement was really overdue. I've always hated the way that the gradient tool functioned in Photoshop and wished that it could be more like Illustrator. And then when Illustrator added the, the functionality of adjusting the gradient on the fly, I really hoped Photoshop would follow suit and they finally did. Now you can drag your line to create your gradient and you can edit the look of the gradient right on the canvas. It makes it so much easier to control and actually get the look you want. You can easily update the placement of the colors on the canvas, how, how much of one color you see versus the other and the depth of the fade. Last but not least is the contextual taskbar. You've seen me use it throughout this video and it's similar to the properties panel in Illustrator in that it tries to anticipate the most relevant next steps you might take given the previous task you did. And it shows you the tools and or functions that would help you achieve those next steps. So for instance, when I start a new document, I'll probably want to bring in an image to be the background or part of the mood board. Once the image comes in, if I like it as is, I'll want to commit. In the past, I might hit return, but now the contextual taskbar shows a check mark, which I can hit to commit the image to the canvas. From there, the options shown allow me to select the main subject, remove the background, transform the object, create an adjustment layer, or head over to use the properties panel. All very valid and thoughtful options that I would likely choose. I love this bar and I think it's really another great way for you to streamline your workflow in Photoshop. And the other type of designer in the realm of fashion that tends to use Photoshop the most is a textile designer. And I think all of these updates are valid for you as well. Now keep in mind that if you want to use the generative AI or the remove tool, you have to be using Photoshop beta. But both the improved gradient tool and then the contextual taskbar can be accessed through the regular Photoshop app with the most recent May 2023 update. So which of these is your favorite? I think for me, it's the new taskbar followed by the gradients. How about you? Let me know in the comments section which of these tools you're most excited to try. Thanks for watching today's video. If you're new to digital fashion design software, click the link in the description to sign up for one of my courses, schedule a call for private tutoring, and of course, check out more of the videos on this channel for digital fashion design tips. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next time.